Hey folks, welcome to Monday the 28th of June 2021. Just uh, day one back from uh, a nice break uh, to be with my newborn son, uh, PJ. So we're all doing great and uh, thanks for all the well wishes. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to get onto these uh, crypto charts and we have had uh, a really miserable, uh, probably two weeks, uh, I would say, um, really punctuated to start off with uh, Elon's sort of commentary and interference with uh, the markets. Um, but really, the main, the main things, uh, themes that we need to be aware of in the marketplace are last week, you know, we had uh, Chinese authorities clamping down quite hard on mining activities. Uh, there were videos and pictures all over uh, Twitter and YouTube on mining operations with thousands of uh, GPUs at work in the markets, um, taking them offline, taking them off racks, shipping them out. I literally saw guys with shovels and buckets uh, loading CPUs into, <laughs> into tra trucks and trailers. And of course, uh, a little little known thing there is that uh, these GPUs and whatnot are not licensed to be used um, in other territories. The ones that are used in Ch mainland China, um, the power ratings and, and whatnot, and the safety ratings on these uh, GPU units is, is, is not um, legal, street legal, I think, for European uh, regulations or for Euro uh, US regulations. So you know, when it comes to the question of where are these miners going to go, I think it's not a big deal. I think they're going to go offshore China, uh, you know, they could go to Vietnam, Taiwan, lots of different places. So actually to look back on what happened there with Chinese regulation clamping down, you're really just going to see a migration of that mining act activity from mainland China to other territories. And I actually see it as a bullish story, but not in the short term, uh, definitely in the medium term being a three to six month view. And of course, the longer term view is kind of probably the six months to, uh, to uh, from uh, six months or a year onwards, right? So uh, really, you know, I think that's quite a bullish thing for the longer term uh, bag holders, if you like. Um, what else we can uh, look at in the major themes within the market? And um, we can look at really the biggest story at the moment being um, that we, of course, have the uh, UK financial regulator, the FCA, um, coming in as of yesterday and talking about uh, they put on um, they put on uh, basically, I think, uh, some warrants uh, towards Binance. Essentially, they've ordered Binance uh, limited um, to stop uh, stop the regulated activities in the UK. Now, what this means is, um, it actually means that Binance are essentially a, a broker and an, ex an exchange uh, at the same time. There are lots of brokers and exchanges in the markets, especially in the CFD markets in the UK. Uh, they are registered offshore in places like Malta, for example, but Binance, the, the, the division of Binance, it's, it's quite a separated company and siloed company and the division that uh, the FCA have put these orders against um, is, is actually completely siloed off from the mothership, uh, which is kind of Binance Limited uh, Singapore, I think it is. Um, so that's the one that I have an account with as well. There's Binance.us, there's Binance.it, I think there's quite a few. Um, so this isn't really as impactful and as negative a story as we might like to imagine uh, for these markets. Um, you know, I'm actually looking at a lot of the major coins like Ethereum is up 15% uh, this morning, uh, Link uh, is up 14%, uh, Stellar is up 12, 12 and a half, 12 and 3.25%. You know, it's, it's not really that negative a story um, because essentially Binance is buffered against this sort of activity coming against them right it's buffered against that and um, but it is the uk government saying listen you know what we don't think our customers and the public are well protected against some of the activities going on added to that the main reasoning for this action against finance 
is of course to do with MIFID II financial regulations. Now MIFID II financial regulations uh, are really in place to clamp down on uh, two things, anti-money, uh, sorry, well, anti-terrorism financing and then money laundering. Okay, so these two activities, these are the you know, main activities, AML, anti-money uh, laundering and um, anti-terrorist funding, right? And so the UK regulators come in and said, you know what, we think there's quite a lot of that going on in Binance, right? And they regularly do this with uh, a lot of licensed um, exchanges and brokers. So if you're uh, a money manager, you kind of have to uh, be a MIFID II certified and take a course. I've taken the course in the past um, where you have to kind of know your customer, all these sorts of things, right? And so this isn't really that big a deal, um, but of course it does make a terrible headline for Binance. And so here we are. So let's go across to the charts and have a look at what really I make out of these um, because I don't really see it being as terrible for Binance um, uh, or for the markets as people may may get out to be. Uh, so let's just go to the main coins first. We'll cover uh, Bitcoin, <coughs> excuse me, and Ethereum. I'll just take some coffee before my throat shuts down. All right, uh, so here we are on Bitcoin. Now I'm not actually, I don't actually have my current price line on here, which is a little bit disconcerting, or I do. Uh, so current price, uh, I think for me, current price at the moment, I just have to check on my connection, but it should be in and around the 33s. Just let me check that. Um, just let me check that on Binance. Uh, Bitcoin, USD. Okay. And uh, USDT. Okay, so here you go. I'll actually bring this chart in. Uh, we're trading 34850s 34850s so i should actually have that uh, here but irregardless these are daily bars okay so i, I don't really want to get down to the minutia of uh 60 minute bars on this because it's, you know we really need to take a broad view uh with these markets so um yeah, I think, look, I've been saying it all along. I think 20,000 is where we need to get to to pick up the real buyers in this market and then get back on up here for, you know, 100,000, for example. So, you know, every commentator on Bitcoin in the market now uh, seems to talk about Wyckoff distributions and accumulation. Well, you know, if enough people talk about something in the market and use a tool in the market, well, guess what? That tool becomes all important and all prevalent. I often say that, uh, you know, if Warren Buffett said that he makes his investment decisions by how a sheep wakes up in the morning, you would suddenly see a spike in, in, in the price of sheep, you know, because people would just, well, for, for, for want of a better pun, people would flock to that. As, as a signal generator, right? Because they, you know, it's Warren Buffett, right? So a couple of the technical uh, analysts who are quite prominent on YouTube have uh, been explaining uh, Wyckoff distributions and what they look like and how you should trade them. And so therefore you actually do see a huge uh, Wyckoff accumulation phase here um, coming up into distribution. Uh, this is a bit of a fluff here. <coughs> this is, um, this is then uh, accumulation for distribution again here, bear flag accumulation for distribution. And now we're coming back in here, accumulation uh, for distribution, possibly on the upside. So yeah, I do see a push to 46s, uh, but I think that can distribute back down to 20s at some time. So for me, it's, you know, I'm just gonna wait and see how this trades. I don't actually uh, own any Bitcoin now. Um, I'm just way deep in DeFi. Uh, so where is the price going? It's very hard to say at the moment, uh, but for me, I would say we have support on 31 to 427s and uh, we have resistance on 46s. So really that range, I think, will play out um, over the next probably month um, to bring us into start of August. Uh, so uh, that's Bitcoin. I uh, don't want to harp on about it too much, but certainly the rhetoric I'm seeing in the media is that you know what, maybe Bitcoin is a little too useless 
maybe we like Ethereum, maybe we like uh, the smarter contract, um, the networking abilities, the DeFi uh, appeal of something like Ethereum. So that brings us on to Ethereum and here we are. So um, I definitely do see major buying support, 1357 spot 30. Uh, that was indeed um, the high uh, from, well, actually I don't have the dates available back here, but um, you can see really good level to be involved at uh, for here and selling down um, back at this point was really well, well supported uh, to come back up. But unfortunately, um, you know, you do see uh, this pennant structure. Let me just show you this here. This type of pennant structure thing happen all of the time and we do exit the way we come in. And so, you know, at this point here, uh, we did exit the way we came in. So we came into it from the downside. Well, this is all actually earmarked by the bear flag that we had up here. Um, this was the actual pullback point here. Very easy trading, to be honest, uh, to short that thing there on the bear flag formation, trade it down into, well, pick your supports. Um, but now when it starts to consolidate here, people go, okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's caught in a better range here. We have support, we should trade back up to new all time highs. Incorrect, because it's starting to accumulate uh, in a flag or a, a, sorry, a pennant pattern and it will exit the way it came in to the downside. So I don't want to have a big uh, set of drawings here um, on this chart. I want to keep it very simple. And so there's uh, Ethereum trading 20, 69 spot 8 at the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't changed these charts in quite a long time. Uh, not certainly since I left uh, for a break. Uh, so yeah, I think we could get higher in, in, in Ethereum uh, back up to the 25s. But, you know, I'd rather really to tear in again for the buy, for the long hold. I'd rather wait for a 1357 spot 30, uh, you know, have a limit order in there and buying it not on margin, not on leverage or on full margin and not buying it on any leverage. And, and if it does come down to the 495s down here for support or, you know, let's say the 916s, um, well, y you don't have to stress about that. I mean, yeah, you're taking a drawdown on your funds, but um, ultimately, I, I do believe in much, much higher pricing for Ethereum, 5,000, for example, uh, being the first major stop on the upside. Uh, okay, moving on, Matic. Uh, Matic, not really a major coin like uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin. However, you know, a couple of traders that I uh, kind of collaborate with in Texas our big and Matic uh, member of the elite team um, that we work with in the UK is also big and Matic. Uh, I've taken a little bit of this, uh, not much lottery ticket money, to be honest. And I am looking for much higher prices. It is well supported on the range that we'd identified back here. So, uh, you know, I do like the high uh, spot 7829s. Uh, this is Matic to the Euro. Um, so, you know, it's, it, the structure and the shape of the market will be the same on Matic to USD. Uh, so you just have to put on uh, your drawings or, or you could easily convert these prices to dollar uh, market prices from the euro should you wish to trade the structure. And um, this is not investment advice. This is educational purposes only. Uh, so, yeah, I like this range in pink here. Look at the support that came in. Look at that support, what, like uh, 10 days ago, three, four, four, six, seven days ago, a week ago. I mean, look at that support. It does look it had, like it has a face rip in mind um, back up here, but, you know, remaining to be seen. I'd love to probably see this thing trade down to the 55s, the zero spot 55s, get along and then, and then trade that thing up. Um, I don't really understand the fundamentals on Matic as well as I do on the other products though. Um, just let me get some of these uh, fans off here. I think it's kicking up a lot of dust in my office. And kill the one under my desk. Okay. <coughs> Let's have a look. Doge. Yeah, I mean Doge. I don't know. I mean, look, I had a couple of buy points in here. You can see support did come in at this point. Um, and again, at the bottom of the range would be where I really do want to get on board with uh, probably tearing in just another small amount of money. Again, sort of lottery ticket money, just, you know, a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand into this. 
you know, and then look for some upside. Um, didn't really take too much of this off at the tops when I think we were up, uh, we we're up about two thousand percent on the trade. Um, you know, and look, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really making a living out of trading crypto. It's more futures is my bag, and so. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be putting too much attention into this day to day. And so that's why I'm really trading the daily bar candles rather than trying to trade like 60 minute bars. Uh, let's look at Cardano. Uh, Cardano having a pretty decent morning. Um, something here. Yeah, it's up about 10%. Uh, we're not actually seeing that. I think my exchange is a little bit behind times right now. But um, yeah, I think we're working the pink range here. Uh, I think a breach to the downside is going to be extremely meaningful for Cardano. But, you know, if it does, I just think it's going to be well supported. I really do. You know, it's seeing a lot of demand here for, for contracts on this product. Um, anything below this uh, range that I've identified, right? So, you know, we're just coming into major swing buyers territory should we come down here. And probably I'm going to put on like some moving averages on these. So next Monday, you'll probably see uh, where we sit against the moving averages on a lot of these products. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, do, 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 do Stellar. Yeah, I think Stellar is actually having a decent day, but it has dropped out of, of its supportive range. And so again, into this area where we do have really good demand. And uh, I think that demand, you know, well, it is trying to pick up again. So, you know, if you're long at the moment uh, from any of these lows, it would be only prudent to take something off here around uh, the spot uh, zero uh, or zero spot 25 uh, euro cent to the Stellar Lumen. Um, again, you know, I'm holding these things for uh, the medium to long term. So I'm not too, too uh, obsessed with any of this price action at this time you know i think we're going to be trading much higher in this product over the next 24 months um so that's really it for the major coins to look at ripple as well of course ripple um you know testing the high of this uh, consolidation range that it had been in for quite some time i do believe the future is a lot brighter for ripple than it was through any of this here any of this they've sorted out their court case it's looking really good uh, future-wise for this uh, coin. So I do see a lot of good support coming in here and anything in this area should be bought. Uh, essentially that's down to spot three uh, euro cents per coin um, up to sort of uh, spot five for uh, euro cents. So, okay. I had posted in the uh, in the Amplify Crypto room an article that was published on Zero Hedge, which also then had an accompanying uh, Wharton Finance School report on DeFi space. I highly recommend uh, going back and having a look at that. Uh, go read the article, read the report. It's uh, really fantastic stuff. And uh, if you know if you want to know a little bit more about DeFi and uh, where it's all going, who are the major players. Uh, what are the networks, what stage are the networks at, etc, etc. All right, guys and girls, if you're interested in joining us in the futures trading room uh, for live uh, coverage of our, um, of our markets, uh, what we look at really in that area is uh, this. Uh, you've got Euro, Cable, Gold, DAX, Spoos. We also look at NASDAQ once we open on the US. Uh, the Dow, Spoos being uh, the S&P 500. Um, that's that's me getting stopped out of something there. Um, so, uh, what else? Bonds, WTI, uh, T notes, and uh, the Dixie. So, we look at these uh, pretty much every day uh, from eight a.m. to ten a.m. and then uh, we cover back on again. We lead into the U.S. session at one o'clock with a pre-U.S. video, uh, covering what we expect to see throughout the upcoming session. And we also cover data events as they break, both in the Euro morning and in the US session. So, you know, we've got a really good crew. Uh, we're spotting a lot of great trades here, guys and girls. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to have any newcomers uh, along. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up for this week's edition of the uh, Crypto Week Ahead. And I wish you all the best and uh, keep your, your risk well managed, guys and girls. Cheers. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.